everybody, and welcome to episode four of the greatest discussion slash debate show on YouTube and Blip TV. It is none other than Shout! And I am here with two very special guests. I am joined by returning guests from the last episode, Lone. Lone, how are you doing? Yo. <laughs> and I'm joined with my first, his first time on the show, a good friend of mine, former reviewing partner of mine. And uh, we'll probably, you know, do some more videos in future. Who knows? Ladies and gentlemen, here's the Quill Guy, the one, the only, Kai Shepard! Yarit! <laughs> Yarit, mate! How are you doing, man? I thought I'd throw a bit of Jordy out there. I don't usually speak like that, guys. Just, just to put it out there. <laughs> I don't, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't normally talk like that. No, Never! Not like that. <laughs> right, so basically, for all, the guys, for all the people who are just joining the show, allow me to explain what the concept is. Normally, we'll have three or four guests. Today, we have three guests. So, therefore, each of us are going to get 25 minutes to talk about a topic of our choice. So what are we going to talk about? Well, that's really up to us. Our guests come on with the subject they'll let you talk about for 20 or 25 minutes. We all debate it. We all discuss it. And then after the 20, 25 minutes is up, we move on to the next subject. What we've all talked about them, we'll do a section called What We Learned, where we talk about, well, what we've learned, and then it's all the way to the end of the show. Now, some of you may be going, well, hang on, isn't it Adam's turn to present the show? Well, unfortunately, would be here, and I'm getting echo, <laughs> would be here to host the show, but unfortunately he's taken ill, so I've had to step in to run the show. So, ladies and gentlemen... 25 minutes are already on the clock, and we've decided that I'm going to be going first. Sucker. So, my subject is going to be gay marriage and family values. Aww. Yes. And yeah. as everyone knows, I, I've, and everyone knows, I haven't lost my temper yet on this show. Not yet. It will happen. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> We're talking about religion. So 25 minutes in three, two, one. So I re well, this house received a letter just the other day. Um, it's signed by Most Reverend V. Nichols and Most Reverend P. Smith. I would like to read <laughs> this letter entitled A Letter on Marriage from the President and Vice President of the Bishops' Conference of England and Wales. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, this week the coalition government is expected to present its consultation paper on the proposed change to the legal definition of marriage so as to open the institution of marriage to same-sex partnerships. Today we want to put it before you, the Catholic vision of marriage and the light it casts on the importance of marriage in our society. The roots of the institution of marriage lie in our nature. Male and female we have been created and written into our nature is the pattern of complementary infertility. This pattern is, of course, affirmed by many other religious traditions. Mm. Christian teaching fills out this pattern and reveals its deepest meaning, <laughs> but neither the church nor the state has the power to change the fundamental understanding of marriage itself, nor is this simply a matter of public opinion. Understood as a lifelong commitment between a man and a woman, and for the creation and upbringing of children, marriage is an expression of our fundamental humanity. Its status in law is the prudent fruit of experience. For the good of the spouses and the good of the family, in this way society esteems the married couple as the source of guardians of the next generation. As an institution, marriage is at the foundation of our society. There are many reasons why people get married. For most couples, this is an instinctive understanding that the stability of a marriage provides the best context for the flourishing of their relationship and for bringing up their children. Society recognises marriages as an important institution for these same reasons, to enhance stability in society and to respect and support parents in the crucial task of having children bring them up as well as possible. The Church starts from this appreciation that the marriage is a natural institution and indeed the Church recognises civil marriage. The Catholic, Catholic understanding of marriage, however, raises this to a new level. This rather abstract words are reflected, however, imperfectly in the experience of married couples. We know that the heart of their marriage is a relationship as astonishing power and richness for the couple, their children, their wider circle of friends and relations in society. Now, I'll go on and post the rest of this letter um, on the actual uh, video, so people right now will be able to read that as I'm bubbling along and as I'm talking. Now, here's my problem. First of all, it talks about, it's basically the letter goes on to basically say that, you know, marriage should only be between man and a woman. The 
standard Catholic bullshit answer. Let me break that more broad. The standard Christian bullshit answer. No, actually, let me, let me push that a little bit further. The standard religious bullshit answer. In fact, let me just broaden that even further. Standard bullshit answer. <laughs> this, there's, a, there's a few comments that have been made about the idea of gay marriage and all this jazz, which... Unconstitutional. I, well, he, well he, he, here's my first big problem. The letter, go, the letter states, as well, the first thing the letter states was, many religions agree with this idea. So now the Christians are worried about people agreeing with them. Normally it's a case of, well, your religion's wrong, ours is right. Now it's like, see, other religions agree with us. Ah, uh, right. So, so, now, so now it matters, does it? But that's a small, that's a small jab to begin with, really. That's like the birthday bumps of my argument. <laughs> hmm. Let me get into some kidney blows, shall we? Woohoo! Kidney blows! First of all, when we're talking about gay marriage, <laughs> everyone will bring up the traditional family. <clears throat> so I've decided to tackle both. Not tackle, and I would like to, as in to spear or give a football tackle to every goddamn moron that tries to compare this concept of morality with traditional family values. But no, rather, I'm going to tackle the issue. Now, the first thing I want to address, there is no such thing as a traditional family. The concept doesn't exist. It's not true. It's a fallacy. It's make-believe. And the only people who believe that there is such thing as a traditional family are the ones who want to tell you that your family is wrong. Think about it. If you look in history, and many professors of sociology will tell you this, and one has said this, a Judas says, the other professor of sociology at New York University, has even gone to say, and it's true, that the most common form of marriage in all of human history was one man and many women. The most common form of marriage. Hmm. And when you think about it, if we look in history, what was the major purpose of marriage? To procreate, apparently. Oh, no, 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 no. Here's the thing. It goes even before that. Oh, you're supposed so to be by... faithful? Oh, yeah, you're supposed to be faithful. But... Call that evil no. divorce, so, right? Yeah. Some people say it's all about love. <laughs> it's all about romance. <laughs> You know, you know, and I <laughs> will always love you within the confines of the law and the Christian morality ideas. No. I can just see it now at the end of Titanic. I can see Rose chucking a Bible into the ocean instead of a heart in the ocean. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but no. The idea was to create family alliances. Mm. You were married into families. Pre-arranged marriages, you know, putting children together in the hope that when they grow up they'll marry each other. In most times you often force them to get married anyway because, God forbid, if you dare not marry this woman, you wouldn't get access to the family bank account. Who knows? You know, you know, again, but again, if you're going to talk about traditional family, if we go by tra the actual definition of tradition... We should be in polygamous arranged marriages. Oh, you know, the traditional family here in the States is you have the husband and the wife, and the wife stays home and yes. cooks and oh, cleans no. and, be the gen and, and is a general bitch while the man <laughs> brings home the money, and the kids play in the yard, and the wife pick a fence with the fucking dog. <laughs> yes, but that's quite funny. There is no such This idea of the traditional family does not exist. Yes, the breadwinner, house carer, and the children family exist. But by calling that, calling that the traditional family is like picking one, uh, one person out who sacrifices virgins and then say, oh, that's a traditional pagan. It's like, do you know anything no, about No, no, you don't! God damn you, Catholic Church! I'm sick of you! Go and get some fucking ideas on how you realise what life is! The world does not work in your clockwork democracy! Dictatorships are a fallacy! You're all fucking homophobes! Go away! <laughs> this, 
Well, if you decide to point out that Kai is in fact a pig. <laughs> I am tired of this awful religious bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I am tired. Now it's unlimited. I am sat here and I am sat to those homophobic fucks for far too long. There is one limit in which you start crossing me on my religion. Too I, I think I think Kai's gonna get the award for best guest ever on this at this point. He's a definitely contender. But uh oh, oh, Kai Kai you're up. Cody, let's kill the Pope! <laughs> oh shit, yeah, I just spit eggs on myself. Seven seven up it's falling down my face. It's on twenty twelve, I'm coming, fucker! Oh, shit. Anyway, back to my, back to my. Place. I'm gonna go die now. The, 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 just because it's the kind of family you want, and maybe it's the kind of family you see most of the time from your perspective, does not make it the traditional family. <coughs> Tradition follows repetition and patterns, and if we look at history, that repetition and patterns show it's the one man, many women family alliance kind of marriage. So. <sighs> Then the argument from people comes across saying, well, you know, you need, civilization is built upon stable marriages. I then turn to Judith Stacy, the professor of sociology at New York University, who turns out and states, quite clearly, there has been no society ever in history that was able to have a stable marriage system based on the notion of romantic love. Ah, ah, feel that. It's the warm, comforting blanket of truth. <laughs> along with the plushy pillow of Egyptian feather and fax. Uh, I do have to say this as well. In the last few years, um, it is actually discovered that <coughs> do not need sperm in order to have children. They they found a way to have it to where, like, you take some shit out of one egg and put it in another woman's egg, and bam, a kid pops out. So, yeah... But even taking that out of the equation, right? Mm-hmm. You know, take that out, take that out of the equation. Um, it it, it goes. It, it's again. I have issues with this concept of traditional families, and the reason, you know, <laughs> this this notion of oh, a traditional. There's a traditional family. There is a uh, there is a way it should work. It doesn't work. It makes no sense. Now. One of the biggest arguments that religious people bring up in terms of marriage is, of course, children. It's called adoption. Dumbass. Well, no, it's not. No, no, it's not even that because <laughs> many religious people and homophobic people, or as I like to call homophobic people, Nimrods, um, will say, "Oh, that children that grow up in, in like gay couple relationships and all that will be damaged." Woohoo! I'm damaged. There was an 18-year study. In America Woo-hoo. and in Europe, 18 years observing het- your heterosexual parents, homosexual parents of both like male, gay, and lesbian variety. Uh, also, this included like bisexuals and other jazz. This is what it showed. Just some of the things it showed. The sexuality of parents had no observable effect on the sexuality of children. What? So it's- the sexuality of the parents had no observable effect on the sexuality of children. And are they reading that from some sort of blind man scribbling, possibly an alcoholic? I don't know, because that makes no sense. Have have they actually observed any more people than who's been brainwashed by that bullshit? Obviously not. They obviously walked into some Westboro church family and went, oh, see, they're straight, they're straight. See, there's nothing to do with that. They're straight because God made them straight. Or some, you know, they're not being following into the... Kai, Kai, what are you arguing against here, dude? I, I, I just think that they're wrong. I think, to be honest with you, um, what, no, what, 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 I, what I, I, you're saying is that the children of same-sex couples do not show any pre- preference to being gay or straight. Like their yeah. sexual preferences of their, their parents don't yeah, affect is, them as children. There is, no, 
The sexuality well, of the look parents. At, had... But if you look at it the other way, that, that happens. It, I mean, you have to say, I know a lot of people who have become gay or bisexual because their parents um, brought them up to believe that it was an, an, uh, an okay thing, which it is, of course. Um, and yeah, but... it has influenced them in that sense. Or brothers yes, or sisters. The problem, is, the problem is, I could turn around and point out a couple of people, or a few people, but we're talking about an 18-year study Involving thousands of families. Mm. So, what what we consider, it's like if one person sees something, you see something happen, and they relate a cause and effect theory to it. Like, well, this happened, therefore, when this happens, that must happen. For them, that's conclusive. And if they see it more than once, like, oh my god. But if you take that to a study where that may happen twice out of thousands. Yeah. It's it's no observable uh, it's no observable relation. It's a freak accident, if anything. But anyway, the chances of the sexuality of parents having nothing to do with the sexuality of the children are high. Okay, it's just people will be who they are. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the, another thing which you know to counter the people who say, "Oh, well, you know, people who are you know gay parents will produce gay children." What about straight parents who produce gay children? Mm. They're homophobic cunts. Well, we're talking about wow. homophobic. Moving on to homophobia, actually. In half of the family's studies, that's all of all the gay families, right? Mm-hmm. In half of the families, kids by the age of 10 were experienced, they had experienced, i.e. were victim to homophobia. Mm. Well, you see, would you call it homophobia? I was discussing this the other day, Steve, and I want to know a correct terminology because homophobia is described in the dictionary and is, as we know, a phobia, which means a fear of gay people or people who are of same sexual uh, orientation. So what would be if you were if there was um, what would be the definition Uh, of something that where you hate you're hating on someone? um, Well, technically, a phobia is an extreme or rational fear or aversion Mm -hmm. to something. So, it because I had this argument a long time ago. I said that um, you know phobia. It's not a natural phobia because you're not scared of them, but it's also counts as an aversion, which is just a hatred. Right. So it's basically a fear or a hatred with no rational explanation. So the homophobic, there is there is homophobia. It's basically there is no rational, there is no logical reasoning for you to hate or fear. I thought yeah, it might have been homoist or something like that, because obviously you've got sexism, you know, and I thought maybe something like homoism would go along with it or something like that. Yeah, I, to be fair, it is. I mean, I, I argued that point, but I was proven wrong on it. Mm. You know, it's not like, you know, so I, I again, though, as Jeremy Clarkson once said, everything has to have a name, mm. you know, <laughs> you know, it's a society that you have to name everything. But in the study, one last point from the study, on average, and this is not just... You know, these families, these are, this is stuff outside the study as well. On average, non-traditional families, gay, bisexual, polygamous, all this shit, tended to prove to be more successful than traditional marriage. Mm. So basically, traditional couples failed a lot more than these non-traditional ones. Now, I'm just going to quickly put, throw in my opinion on marriage, right? I understand the financial aspect of it, right? Um, so I'm not going to discuss the taxes of it because at the point I do think there is such a thing as, okay, you have to have a limit somewhere. But in the concept of marriage, I have no problem with marriage. Okay. 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 I've got no problem with, uh, oh, hang on, hang on. Guys, are you on your side, dude? Yeah. No. I can hear that. I mean, you have to take headphones, dude. Um, live people <laughs> this is going to get edited it out nope <laughs> but anyway that's better but anyway um, I'm all for standard okay. marriage you know, I'd rather get married myself I'm all for gay marriage I'm all for polygamous marriage I'm all for you know I, I, I really don't care marriage is marriage you know, it's all like, for you, it he means he supports it not actually wanting to take part in it Precisely. Isn't that know? right, Louis? I mean, yeah. Because <laughs> seriously, I ain't doing a three. I ain't doing a threesome with another chick. That's just personal preference. Just mine. My I'm point thinking. is, 
<clears throat> no, my point <clears throat> is, you know, I don't have, you know, I I don't plan on being a part of a polygamous marriage or a gay marriage because I plan on marrying Ron, <laughs> right? That's it. But that doesn't mean I can't support the kids. I don't understand the problem with polygamous marriage. Uh, and again, from a tax point of view, and from like a financial benefit point of view, oh, I could understand the problem. But I'm talking purely on a on this, uh, recognizing these people's marriage basis. I don't have a problem with that. Now, obviously, the government has a way around it. They're called civil partnerships, which don't apply to polygamy. Uh, oh. what? Breaky, breaky, yuppie. Boom. Don't know why. All right, weird. But anyway, um, they have something. You know, they have the civic partnerships, which still which apply to gay marriages and all that jazz. But now, of course, in gay marriages, they don't have the same rights as uh, sorry, civil partnerships. They don't have the same rights as married couples. I've got one question. Why? What's the logical reason? Um. Bearing in mind that we are supposed to be an anti totalitarian state, as is America, as far as I'm aware, it's meant to be anti totalitarian Yeah, we don't have an actual national religion, even though everybody says that we so, do, and that it's... Actually, in- no, England, England does have a national religion. You guys have the, uh... Protestant. Yeah. Thank a you, people- Queen Elizabeth! Yes. I'm sick of people saying, oh, you're a Catholic country. No, I'm not. Have you ever heard of the Church of England? Have you ever even seen the Queen who's the fucking head? Yes. I mean, she's the head of the damn thing. I mean, if any, right, anybody who says that is obviously a retard or hasn't bothered to look it up before speaking. To be fair, a lot of people I speak to don't even know that Wales exists as a country, you know. Well, Steve, but it's anyway. a shame that you talk to people who are geologically or geog- geographically Fucking stupid! Indeed. Yay, but... I was fucking stupid. Oh, God! <laughs> I'm so sorry! Yeah. But, Hi. um... Well, fuck you too, guys. I am gonna, good. I am gonna read, I am gonna read, though, the last paragraph of this letter <laughs> for anyone that hasn't read it on the video already, and of course for you guys who haven't seen it yet. Change the legal definition of marriage would be profoundly a radical step. Its consequences should be taken seriously now. I agree. It would be a radical step, and we would have to seriously consider the consequences. But it goes on. The law helps to shape and form social and cultural values. A change in the law would gradually and inevitably transform society's understanding of the purpose of marriage. Uh-oh. We're talking about purpose now. There's a purpose? It would, it would reduce it to just the commitment of the two people involved. There would be no recognition of the complementary of male and female, or that marriage is intended for the procreation and education of children. Right, you fuckers. So, so wait, so wait. Hang on, hang on. Here's my problem. I haven't lost my temper on the show yet. I lost it first. <laughs> you misguided, ignorant, arrogant, propaganda spewing. Pieces of shit. Uh oh. cover. The purpose of marriage? Marriage as a concept has existed long before your God was a th- fucking thought in the realms of people's minds. People were joining in union before the word marriage fucking existed. Oh shit. And now you dare to turn around and say, first of all, it would reduce it to just the commitment of the two people involved. So basically, what you're trying to say is that, as far as Christianity is concerned, because this is a Christian letter, so I'm not going to pick on the other religions yet, but you're now saying that love, basically, to quote a song, What's love got to do? Got to do with it. What's love? It's a kid at Apparently... Love doesn't have anything to do with your purpose. Love doesn't fit into your grand fucking plan, does it? No. It would reduce it to just the commitment of the two people involved. Well, me and Lord don't plan on having kids. Oh, fuck no. If I have a kid, I am so, not my death. So, one. there would be no recognition of the company of male and female, or that marriage is intended for the procreation of education of children. So... Explain to me. So, basically, if two people don't plan on having kids, or if they can't have kids, whatever... Should they not be allowed to marry? Of course they should! 
That's my point. This this is a retarded, outdated, moronic, stupid, pointless concept. And I've been in this argument a few times, never to a public, never in a public forum, though. You know, within the privacy of friendships, I've had this argument with fellow religious friends, and I welcome the argument. You know, if, I, if they ever want to come on the show and, you know, share this argument with us, that'd be great. You know, I'm happy to revisit the topic. But this, if, uh, you know, this upsets me. This really gets me because a lot of the Christians I know are very hardworking people. Like, take my parents. My parents are, uh, are a Catholic couple, hardworking, very loving very caring, want nothing but the best for people, you know, they're not like this. Why can't we all just get along? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what my mind's think of the children. I want a but... hug. <laughs> I want a hug from the Pope and tell him that it's you okay don't want a from him. to be gay. <laughs> it's okay. Let's all join hands and the gay people can join well, other Amazon. things. Amazon's okay to be gay. It's, it's a kind of like they're right. And marriage is intended for the procreation and education of children. That line gets me. It gets that me too, me. Steve. It gets me too. I don't understand why they're just suddenly dictating to us why we're getting married. I don't see why they should even have an opinion on it. Yeah. Marriage is marriage. It's a universal thing. Why they need to state that in a letter is beyond ridiculous. I think if we're reading this letter and you're posting it to someone who owns a house, I think we fucking know what marriage is. Do you need to tell us that? No, you don't. Well, so here's the, here's the very last line of the letter. We have a duty to married people today and to those who come after us to do all we can to ensure that the true meaning of marriage is not lost for future generations. <laughs> Why do they think? Why do they think that they I, have I, a I, duty? I look at it this way. Hmm? You may laugh. You may look at me go, oh my God, what the fuck? But I look at, it, I look at marriage this way. Mm-hmm. With me marrying you, Stephen, mm-hmm. that means that I can fuck you anytime, anywhere, any place in my home. Whoa, I've got a shot there. Problem. Well, I've got ten seconds, so I'm just going to finish up this topic yeah, yeah. with one thing. Church, you're worried that we people who support gay marriage are going to destroy the true meaning of marriage? I've got two words for you. Britney Spears. And that is the end of that topic. So, it means we're going to move on to first timer on the show and so far hilarious guest, Kai Shepherd. So, Kai, exactly what were you going to talk to us about? Give me a second. Give me a good. Just, just give me a second. I'm going to bask. I know I've got a timer. This this requires a. You see, I haven't started the timer yet. It doesn't start until we find out what the topic is and I go three, two, one, go. So. <laughs> well, this year. That is the sound of an American Mountain Dew, and I am opening it for this show. Be honoured, guys! These days don't come along very often. Mountain Dew? Mountain Dew. American Mountain Dew. In my hands. I, I want... I want... I want... Come to Norwich and you can have them all you want, because I know where to... Damn you, you're trying to lure me to Norwich! I've been waiting for... Anyway. <clears throat> topic. Your so. topic is... <clears throat> Life. Of the average under 30 year old, the battles of economic decline, residual responsibility, expectance of living in a big brother society, and future plans for our country, obviously the UK, and its economy and status in 21st century life. Can I get that so dumbed down, t- please? <coughs> He's talking about stuff. A I'm lot of stuff. stuff. Kai oh, okay. talks about stuff in three, two, one. In 3D! No, sorry. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> that seems to be a phase at the minute, but let's not get on to that, day. I don't want to destroy <laughs> the film. Yes, yeah. anyway. Right, so we have... Um, I'm a student. I'm going to give you a little introduction to who I am. I'm Kai Shepard. I am 20, going on 21, or 101. Uh, my status says I'm currently with a lovely lady, um, and I'm living in a privately owned flat um, in Norwich. Now, I come from a middle-class family, uh, one parent of the family worked, 
Um, I have a sister. She lives somewhere up north. So, um, and I am currently a student at Norwich University College of the Arts studying games, art and design. Now, just to give you a bit of background of me and, and, and my sort of living arrangements, because this is what this will go on to, I'm going to give you some figures, a bit of mathematics. Stephen here will obviously love this bit, I imagine. So, I'm going to okay. go hide in a corner. That's oh, don't worry, don't worry, it's not that bad. I'll be quick. So we've got some figures for you, okay? I got from student finance £9,268. Now, 8385 of that I have to pay back. So essentially, I'm in debt by £8,385 at this point. This would have been last July, May, when I found out. Um... And 300,375, that goes to education. 5,893 pounds is left for me to live on for that entire year. That averages out at 491 pounds and 8.3 pence, so 8 pence a month to live on. Now, this is how much somebody in a one bedroom flat would uh, generally have to pay if they wanted to live comfortably. 450 pounds for a one bedroom flat. Um, it's £90 if you would like TV, broadband and phone uh, with Virgin because Sky don't, you don't allow Sky dishes on uh, flats around here. It's just not a beautiful thing, so they don't let you. Uh, £60 is my food budget. Um, obviously, I'm living with another person, so some of these bills can cover both of us, so this will change on if I lived on my own. £36 for gas, £32 for water, and £24 for electricity. So that is £692 a month to live. Like I say, uh, it costs to live. Now, with my budget, I couldn't live alone on that. So obviously, I've got another person to live with me. Now, if I did live on my own, cut some of those bills down, the rent would still be £450. Uh, Virgin would still be £90. £30 um, for Asda, say I cut my food bills in half. Um, it'll be 28 for gas and 20 for water and another 20 for electric. That works out at £618. Um, so I would be um, if essentially cutting down the price by living on my own, but it's cheaper for us to live together um, because essentially we can share the £700 out between the two of us. So if you want to do what I've done, you'll have to find someone to go to university with. Otherwise, you have to follow the expectance from high school, right? This is my problem. This is where this all starts from. From high school, from first school, you are living part of a plan. And you're going up through, you, you, the whole thing is you, you're pushed into university with this sort of expectance that you, you have to get into there to do anything in life. But of course, the, the reality of it is that the, the, there's unemployment. So... If they tell you you won't get a job if you don't go to university, or it'll be harder for you, and that might be the case. But uh, there's now an expectance of higher education and further education. This is gaining on the problems that we've already got. You know, as you've seen from my financial figures, I am struggling to live on what I've got, which is why I have recently just found myself a job, which has taken me God knows how long. But <clears throat> that's another story. Free yeah, KFC guys, it's a good place to work by the looks of it. So, I, I'll, I'll tell you. I, I, just that, I, I won't be saying that in two months. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> so, I just like the fact the fact that you said it's a good place to work just means I don't have to peep it out. <laughs> oh, as we do on the show, chewy it out. Oh, hi. we don't have beeps. We have Chewbacca. Don't worry, you yeah. can still Chewbacca it out just for old times' sake. Well, um, yes, so from there on, um, I'd like to point out that this is a grand plan for you. And this is, this is why I start to think part of our society is based in a dictatorship sort of setting. I mean, of course, we are a democracy. We are nowhere as, you know, as bad as, as some other places. But we do have a lot of elements of our society that is fucked up on, on that scale. Because I think... Well, it's, it's, it's the ultimate irony. It's like the idea of free will. As Christopher Hitchens says, you have free will because you have no choice. We are a democracy because we have no choice in the matter, you know? No. It's kind of, a, it's kind of a, a democracy born out of dictatorship ideals. Well, you see... It, it, it's Mountain Dew. It gets me through it, Steve. I can't do it without Mountain Dew. I can't do it without any sort of recreation. And this is... It, on top of that, you've got the problem of... That was just bills, right? 
if you want to enjoy yourself, say yes. alcohol and all that. <laughs> yes. This goes into the grand plan that I'm talking about here. The whole grand plan of this dictatorship side of things is you go to school, you get good grades, yeah. you go to university, and while you're at university, you learn to drink. Now, the reason I say that, and why it's so important in the grand scheme of things, is because when you go to university, the actual university encourages you to go out and socialise, which is fine, and drink. So, they're saying you need to go out and drink and get out there and meet people and have those embarrassing moments. And, you know, maybe that's good for the person and all that, but they're not taking into account where the money for those nights are coming from. And especially with the rising climb of the the prices of alcohol and nights like that. I'm paying sometimes up to £100 to go out for a, for a good night. You know, that includes a bit of food, that includes some drink, maybe buying some friends a couple of drinks. You know, it depends how it goes. And then at the end of university, this grand plan has you in a job right in there. That's how it works. When in reality, guys, that's a load of shit. I'm <laughs> sorry, it is. You go to school, maybe, if your parents decide to fucking put you in there, you you have all right grades, and all right means, you know, not amazing. You learn how to drink maybe at year nine onwards, that's probably like eighth grade for Americans. Um, You go to university, if you're lucky, and you drink yourself out of depression and stress just to get through each day without topping yourself because it is so unbelievably fucking wall-banging. You're just so sick of everything at at some points. And, you know, the, the, the problem with that is afterwards... There isn't a job waiting for you. The fuck told you that? You've got to go out that door. You've got to fucking look for it. And not only have you got to fucking look for it, you've got to claw for it, guys. You've got to get out that door. And if you're lucky enough to have a degree, they might give you a second look. And that's only because you're stabbing them in the leg, saying, I want a fucking job right now. And I'm better than everyone else. You, you can't go in and say, well, I've got a degree and I, I do, I would like to work. No, 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 sorry. Attitudes that like, don't get you anywhere. They have to, you, you can't be a nice person and get a job these days. It's just too hard. Um, and that point is, so unemployment in a reality chat, that you may need a master's, right? So if you can't get a job after a degree, you try and go back for a master's. Oh, no, shit hits the fan. Student finance don't cover you for that. Sorry, you're going to have to find the 25 grand it costs for a master's degree. Oh, I don't know how you fucking arse crack because it's not happening out of our pocket. So so you, 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 you finally manage to do that. Our generation gives up and kills itself because there is nowhere for it to go. There is no way out of it. That is what annoys me. And this this whole grand plan of things, it's just repetitive and it's going to get worse. And it's been steadily declining each every five years, which is, is what I would count as a, as a generation. Every five years, it goes down. You get worse and worse and worse. And the government are at the root of it. They are. Because they're the reason that we're in debt. They're the reason we're in an economic crisis. And they're the reason why nobody can get any jobs. Because they're not doing the right things. Now, I'm not saying that it, was, it would be an easy job to sit and fix everything. But I don't think there isn't a plan. They, they keep saying, we grow ourselves out of recession. We grow ourselves out of economic difficulties. I say we are fucked. And the quickest... If we turn around and we admit, as a country... We are doing bad, like Greece did, but Greece waited far too late. They're too late, and now they're, they're, they've been buggered financially, haven't they? We need to do it before we get to that point. We need to admit we are in trouble, but we don't. Instead, all the Conservatives care about are two things. Number one, Conservatives. Number two, course, yeah. bad-mouthing <laughs> Labour. I got a letter through the post the other day. Conservatives, they own 80% of this country in seats. And yep. they still badmouth the people who aren't in control. Give it the fuck up, guys. They yeah. aren't it... doing anything. They're sitting there twiddling their thumbs, waiting for the voters to turn around and go, Oh, shit, we should have went with Labour. I know. Well, we can't do anything about it now. So stop sitting there. Like, if the Conservatives put as much time into actually fucking doing something for the country, actually doing something, instead of getting themselves some financial gain, and the old bastards in Parliament... And, and 
uh, rather than slagging them off in newspapers that I really would rather burn, you know, instead of read, then we would have a fixed economy. We would have a fixed country. There is well, no so, plan to save yeah, us. Well, just, just jumping in here, you know, I mean, it's obvious that there's a lot of problems. I mean, in America, they they have the same kind of issue, I feel. You know, but we've got the state now where if you want to be, you've got a government that says, oh, you should go to university, you should go to this. The first problem is the expense. Because on the one hand, the government is saying, we want you to go to university, and on the other hand, they're going, but we don't want to pay too much for it. Mm-hmm. And then they're saying, then you can go out and get jobs. Well, no offense, but like, if I, I went job hunting yesterday, right? And just from the local job centre, just have a look at these jobs, right? I have a job here, sales advisor. Um, uh, let's have a look. Do I need any any good PT skills? Nothing about a degree there. Uh, retail supervisor. Uh, again, no degree required there. Next job, uh, sales assistant. No job required there. In fact, the job will train you to an MBQ level three to dispense medicine. Mm. Great. And there's one here. Ah, now this is actually working at a contact centre for a, a government branch. Let's have a look here. Oh, nothing there as well. You see, these are the jobs that are available when you leave university. When you leave university, these are the jobs that are available to you. And they're not exactly, oh, wow, I worked three years for a great job. Exactly, right? I've worked, uh, I've worked, uh, I've never been to university. Barely got out of college because I busy fucked around. Here's all the places I've worked in order. Argos, Global Video, Argos again, uh, Home Base, Inland Revenue, Quantum Specials, Two Touch, The Tampa Sports, uh, Tamfield Foods, which was a factory, Red Five, which is a gadget store. I've worked in a lot of places, okay? I've also worked uh, temporarily as in an admin assistant at a primary school and as a teacher's assistant at a primary school, who I even taught my small, a small group about music and drama. I haven't had a degree. I've got, I ain't got no degrees. Do you know what I had? Paychecks. I had wages. I had salaries. Now let's compare wages. that to what I've had. I went. To the, I worked at McDonald's. I worked at a garden centre, and I've worked selling Talk Talk products. Do you know what I've mm-hmm. got? Oh, I'm working for a degree, and that's all I've come out with. I don't get paychecks. I get worry that I can't afford to stay at the job that I'm in. Because of the fact that I have to pay twenty pounds every couple of days to get buses to the places I'm meant to be selling talk talk products to, I worry about the fact that if I get a job, can I actually make it through the the the, the education I'm doing at the time for McDonald's? That was at the end of my GCSE start of A levels, you know, and it it doesn't work. So yeah, I don't know. But the quest, but, but my problem is, um, and I'll have to ask you at uh, what it's like in America, but over here, it's kind of like, while you guys are off at university, the rest of us are going, well, we're getting jobs at the retail centres, at the contact centres, at the schools and all that jazz. Because I've, I've applied for a few jobs, and not once have I ever come across a job that I've applied for, like, um, like w- either working for the council or the government, where they've required a degree. Not once. So... By the time, so theoretically speaking, while the jobs are applied for is Durham County Council, theoretically speaking, well, by the time you get out of, if I got that job, when you get out of university, I could be managing an office branch for my local council, earning, say, 20 grand a year, while you are out looking for the jobs that I was looking for whilst you were at university. Because the government paint this image that once you have this degree, jobs will open up for you. Here's the thing. Maybe if you get a law degree. No, no, you you degree, know, I've got a friend who's got a law degree. She's in her final year now, Steve, and she's looking. Yeah. And I tell you, there are she's the two epicenters of law in England yeah. are, yeah. of course, London and Newcastle. Right? So That makes sense. She lives right near Newcastle in a sense. So she can yeah. get there. She's applied for hundreds of jobs. And what do they want? They don't want a low degree. They don't want someone who's, who's worked in law. They well, want well, someone who's got a my, PhD in law. But yeah, but my point is, though, they, they say this idea of, like, say say you got a degree in, you know, you, you get this big degree. And it's like, well, maybe you can go down the teaching route. But then 
I could go down a teaching route, but get my, you know, but go down a way which doesn't necessarily involve huge university degrees. There are teachers these days who are going through what's known as a, more of a fast track route, mm. or basically just a way that isn't. And the only degree that you are getting is the one that, well, the only reason you have a degree is because you're trained to be a teacher whilst you're getting that degree. So you are working at the same time. Mm. It's this kind of backwards idea. And by the time they finish the degree, well, of course they have a job. It's the one they're fucking doing. You know, that, but that's a fast track way and that's very complicated. And I'm, you know, and I'm briefing it up very, very much so. But people who are leaving with, say, you know, even if you, maybe there are scientific bodies that do require new people with degrees in physics and all that jazz. Maybe, maybe. We don't know because that's basic. We're not bright enough for that shit. You know, I can tell you what a shape looks like the other way around and I can remember a couple of words, but that's all my IQ is good for. My point is, degrees just don't seem to pay up the promises that every government body, Liberal Democrat, Labour, Conservative, Mad, Monster Ruby, Looney Party, and the BNP, and all those wonderful evil bastards, you know, um, seem to say that degrees do. I mean, no, Lord, they don't, they don't. That's the I mean, idea. Lord, you're, what's your opinion on all this? You know, because you're in America, so we're, we're not American, so we haven't got the American viewpoint on this. I mean, what's your thoughts in general on how, like, university students and all that shit? In America. Well, from what I understand, because like like yourself, I don't have a degree. Yeah. So, from, but from what I understand, uh, Americans actually do have different things like FIFA, and um, they can apply for scholarships and stuff like that, um, yeah. and financial aid and all that good hunky dory shit. But I mean, I honestly can't really give. Either, either, you know, any kind of definition to it because, well, you know. Um, <laughs> and... Ignore that. I, I, oh, I am... you I'm stopped sorry. it. <laughs> anyway, but um, I don't have like experience or anything like that because, yeah, a lot of my friends that did go to college are out, but then again, um, I don't really talk to them too much anymore, but. That's because, well, I moved 600 miles away. Um, but, I mean, degrees, they can help you, but we have the issue here where if somebody has more experience than you do, you're fucked. Yeah, no, it's exactly the same how it is here, uh, oddly. I mean, experience seems to be a big thing, but the problem is getting onto the they experience don't... ladder. They exactly. Don't actually, you can't get your foot... <laughs> Exactly. Fuck's sake, Shut <laughs> up! Don't Mario on that bottom of the show! God. Sorry! You were saying, um, Lord! Do, do, do you think when. Oh do you think when Mario answers the phone, he goes, Hey, it's me, you Mario! Well, if it was me, I'd be, Hey, it's a guy, fuck up, I'm on the show! <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we, we've got the same box. We can't yeah. get the experience hey. to get into like, those jobs to get more I'll, experience. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. All right. I am extru- I am extremely good with a computer. I built my first computer from scratch when I was eighteen. Mm. Then I fried it after I got uh, you know shot by lectures or you know shocked by lightning. But I was able to you know build my own computer and I have computer know how. Now, I'm not going to name this company as much as I want to because I want to give a Chewbacca noise. I'm not going to be that petty. No, I'll go ahead. we'll put the Chewbacca noise in. Fuck yes! Anyway, the company's name was called... <clears throat> I went in for an interview. And the person that was interviewing me was extremely impressed. But whenever it came to calling me back to get me into that company, they refused. She could not go ahead and do that. The reason being was this was going to be a call center. And I had no call center experience. And the company was more concerned about having um, call center experience over computer experience. Mm. Well, a relative of mine got hired on because she had both call center and computer experience. And whenever she was going through the training, she met a woman who didn't even know how to turn the computer on, who didn't know where Microsoft 
word was. Oh my god. Didn't, didn't know how to open micro, a Microsoft Word file. And when... You click my, it! <laughs> when my other relative, who also worked for that company at the time, turned to the late to the person that hired me on the other person the hirer was regretting her decision with hiring this person because of just their call center experience because of the simple fact of she knew that i would be able to learn fast because on my application and in my resume it does state that i graduated from traditional schooling six months early. Would have been a year if it hadn't been for government. But haven't we learned that there's no such thing as traditional schooling? Oi! It's no Don't <laughs> stop that again! Shut up, Stephen. This is my rant. <sighs> this is my little section. So shut up. Thank you. But she regretted the fact that she did not hire me on because of the simple fact of I did not have that experience. Needless to say, the person that couldn't even turn on the computer was eventually fired by the end of the training. Well, there you go. So at the end of the day, it's it, you've got the problem with wherever you are in the US, it, there seems to be an, a problem with the focus on education must meet jobs, when actually, at the end of the day, education isn't the big focus in the big wide world. Sorry, government, you fucked up. The actual expectance, you fucking knobheads, is experience. And you know why we aren't getting the jobs? Because we don't have the experience. If you focus more on work experience, if you focus more on getting us into some sort of volunteer positions as part of our education, then maybe we wouldn't be in the fucking problem of 1.8 million people unemployed that we are fucking today. You need to pull your head out, you conservative arses, and actually do something. You've been elected. You finally got back into power after Margaret Thatcher. Fucking do something with it, Jesus. I mean, for God's sake, there is no plan that I can see from where I'm standing, okay? But I'm not going to be a politician, okay? It's their job to fucking fix it. But if they start making promises like the fucking Liberal Democrats did, oh, we're going to reduce student fees. Oh, sorry, we've joined with another government. We've decided to do the fucking opposite. We've raised it to nine grand a year. If I had gone to uni one year later, guys, one year, I would have been in debt by £50,000 by the time I'd finished uni. And that's just on uni fees alone. That isn't including the uh, the overdrafts. I was saying this to Steve the other day. It's ridiculous. I mean, what are we meant to do as people... I mean, I, I'm luckily... I've got a job ahead of me now. I've luckily got myself... Into, but I've worked for that. I've clawed for it in places. You know, and we need to stop living in this fantasy that they've grew us up with. Creating a generation that is divided by two things. Intelligence and ignorance versus idiocy and arrogance. It is ridiculous. How the government will end up in, and as, as a result of that in the world is ridiculous. I don't know. The UK is no good. We have absolutely no produce. We have no use as a country anymore. I don't know how we're going to get out of it, and quite frankly, I'm frightened. Well, you could do you could do what like Greece did, which is like run off. You know how they rent out the Pathen Pathenon? Yeah, Pathenon. Pathenon. Yeah, thank you. You all could like rent out Buckingham Palace. You know, to, let the royals help a to, little bit. To, yeah. So, but to um. Kai, we've got about 20 seconds on this, so uh, your final thoughts on your subject. My final thoughts is that if the Conservatives aren't going to do it, who will? Who is going to step up to the mark on a political scale and fix this country? Because I don't know. And it's fucking terrifying, Steve. I'm you angry. I'm affected. I don't know. No. I don't know my way out of it. I honestly don't. <laughs> I'm not qualified. But somebody must have a way out of this. If it's to be that everyone... Because we're going to end up in a big brother nation with CCTV everywhere. We're going to be under control. Well, you know, that's open for argument on another show. Uh, but the 25 minutes are up, so geez, we're going to move on to our final topic, because we only have three, uh, two guests today. And that's going to be for Lord. So, Lord, what is your subject again? My subject, or my topic, are weeboos. 
Ah, ah wee boos, wee boss, wee boss eye, or wee bitty, or what we do, or morons. So, Lord, your timer starts in three, two, one. <laughs> All right. Here's my problem with the anime generation of today. Me, I'm a kid that actually started growing up with anime, believe it or not, in the early 90s with, you know, Pokemon. Um, what are some other ones, guys? I know there's Pokemon, there's Speed Racer, Astro Boy. Digimon. Oh, and Digimon, yeah. Fuck yeah, Digimon. Um, I, I was actually watching that yeah, day. Shut up. Uh, what about things like Sailor Moon? Yeah, and... Sailor Moon, you know, Dragon Ball. And yeah. it just... With people, like, with the anime crowd of today, with these, like, the younger kids and stuff like that, they are fucking annoying, especially online. The reason being is, anytime you look up, but say on DeviantArt, anytime you see a really nicely done anime picture on the front page, at least 25% of the comments will be, Kawaii desu! And it's like, Dear God, I'm I'm not trying to be mean, but Japanese is not your first language. So don't fucking speak it unless you know more than Kawaii desu or Kai chan fun whatever. It's it makes you look retarded. Alright? It makes you look like you're a fucking ignorant cunt. Alright? And with the anime choices that people have been raving about, like um <coughs> Lucky Lucky Star, and uh, this anime called K-On, which is essentially slice of life animes in which nothing happens. They're a waste of time. I'm not trying to be mean, but I don't want to watch a show about motherfucking tea. Or where everything is solved by drinking motherfucking tea. Or having a conversation for ten minutes on how to eat a chocolate-filled croissant on whether you eat it from what weighs the top, what weighs the bottom, and what different ways you can fucking eat it. Who gives a shit? I watch anime to be entertained. But then you have these fuckers that are all like, oh my god, Naruto is the best series ever. And I understand that Naruto is this generation's Dragon Ball Z, but last time I checked, ninjas don't wear bright motherfucking orange. They're supposed oh. to be stealthy. They're not supposed well, to be able to, like, do a bunch of stupid-ass little hand signals and name off their attack. They're supposed to be quiet and stealthy, and... They're not, they're not ninjas. They're not! I, 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 I hate Naruto as, next, as much as the next person, but as from what I understand, yeah. Naruto is so stealthy, and this is the whole point behind him, he doesn't matter what he wears. He wears his Adidas training suit or whatever he's fucking wearing, um, and... He's as stealthy as the fucking... Chicks that he makes pop up that are naked. He kills them with a nosebleed due to blood loss. That ain't fucking stealthy. No, that's just shit anime. Sorry, that uh, most animes these days overuse that nosebleed. It it's not funny. It's not cute. To be honest, the other anime has gone downhill in the past five years. It has. It has gone downhill since about I'm gonna say 2007. Before 2007, well, it was. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, the Inuyasha. animation... Inuyasha. Dragon oh, Ball Z. Well, Inuyasha was okay. I mean, I really wasn't into into Inuyasha. I know other people that were, and I don't hold them against that. Um, but we had good anime before 2007. I mean, right now, yeah, we're still kind of working our way out of it with, like, animes like Angel Beat, or Angel Beat, um, Steins Gate, uh, Madoka Magica, Pirelli, or... How, what, what, that long ass fucking title with Madoka in it. Everybody knows what it is. It's just shortcutted to my motherfucking Madoka. I mean, it's working <clears throat> its way out, but just anime has gone downhill. And then you get these idiots that think that anime is their goddamn fucking life source. I mean, hell, there was a reviewer that I watched on YouTube who was recently um, convicted of murdering his mother, his father, and his brother, and trying to um, do a Columbine-type shooting at his, like, high school or college or whatever. And people are saying it's because he watched anime. 
No, it was because he was a fucking twat. <laughs> twat. Whatever. He's a fucking curry. And that's, you know, uh, we'll stick with twat. Puala Maji Madoka Magica. Thank you, and I don't feel and, that... And it's Naruto, not... Naruto. I... Naruto. Um, no, is it that or uh, is that, that or it's my house? Uh, it's either that, that or it's uh, Mahau Shuja Madoka I Magica. I don't really give a shit. We're we're just gonna call it Madoka. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Black Rock Shooter is another good one as well. Awesome anime. But but the point is, you get these people, especially at conventions. They like to converge on conventions. And I'm a convention. I've been a convention goer since 2003. I have been to nearly 20 different conventions all up and down the East Coast, anywhere west, or not west, but east of the Mississippi. I've probably been there, all right? But you get these motherfucking retards that take their all their money that they set aside for their hotel, for, you know, their merchandise, even though personally I would go on eBay to get that shit at direct buy so that it's cheaper, or other places online, and they just fucking spend it all. I've been to so many conventions where by the last day of a three-day con, you see people going, we'll hug for, like, you know, we'll hug for money, or we'll hug for food, or um, I spent all my con money, can you help? Who have literally been kicked out of their hotel room because they're a dumb fuck and don't know how to manage their money. I'm sorry, but, oh my god, it's just, it's so horrible. And they're then, in the same situation as me. Money just doesn't want to be around them. Or maybe they just don't know this thing called money management. That anybody uh, else so, with a yeah. rational fucking mind would know and would understand and would go to the person that rented out the hotel room and go, hey, here's such and such a money for my hotel room. I'm giving it to you. If you spend it, that's on you. You know? There's an old, there's an old saying, a fool and his money are soon departed. Oh. So I assume pie, so... You know, it's, yeah, these people, I mean, here's the thing. I've never been to a con. I know I'm going to be going to one at some point. Fucking uh, we, we are We are discussing uh, a 2013 trip between me uh, and a friend of mine. And uh, we're planning on doing this trip. We're not sure yet because obviously the finances involved. But when it comes to me, it's like my first priority is do I have somewhere to be? It's like, do I have a hotel? And if, I was, if I'm going to this con and I'm looking at my money and I take the money with me, I have take with me money I have left and I don't have enough to get a piece of merchandise and have a hotel room, the hotel room's going to come first. Always but always. I know, hotel room and food. And then you get to, like, uh, back in the day, cons used to be about creativity and about originality. Like, you would see... All these different people cosplaying as different anime characters from different shows. Now, uh-huh. now, whenever you go to an anime convention, and I'm not trying to be mean to these three different animes, but Naruto, Bleach, One Piece, those are the big three. You also get to see a bit of Pokemon, but not so much too, you know, not so much anymore. But those <coughs> are the big three. You walk into any anime convention now, you see about 20 goddamn fat-ass Naruto cosplayers that think they can pull this shit off. You know, you know what, it's worse than that, in my personal opinion. Oh, what's worse? It's the Final Fantasy ones. Well, it depends, you, when, depends on the people, depends on the body type of the people doing it. I've, I've seen some badass fucking Vincent cosplayers, and even ones that cross, you know, did the whole cross-gender cosplaying of different Final Fantasy characters. They did them fucking spectacularly. So if you have a good cosplay, I'm going to fucking geek the fuck out and be all, all like, holy shit. Yeah, day. but when you, when you see but someone... when you cos- see a fat-ass chick dressed as Sailor Mars with uh, a white t-shirt where her stomach yeah. is sticking out and going over the band of the skirt that she's uh, wearing... Yeah. I threw it- up. I'm not. Yeah. I flew up in the waiting line for Otacon that year after seeing that shit. I know, but the thing is, so I don't think they make cosplays for fat people, which is a mm-hmm. shame. Excuse me, have you ever heard of Margin Boo? Fuck well, yeah! You, just ignore... call yourself, call yourself pig, and you can do Margin Boo. But say, well, no, but say you wanted to be Sailor Mars, I don't think they do Sailor Mars outfits that big. Well, I, well here's like... the thing then: if they don't make a Sailor Moon costume? Make one yourself. Don't half-ass a cosplay just because 
you are fat bastard who refuses to go on a diet and lay off the pocky and ramen. I, I, I mean, as much as I can agree with you with people who don't do that, I, not everybody's large because of weight uh, of, of overeating. Some people are generally, of course. yeah, yeah. Of course, but it's just make the costume yourself if it don't fit, or if you have a costume that's a little big, go ahead, take it to a sew shop or whatever, get the modifications done to it. It's not, it does not cost that much. I used to be an avid cosplayer. Used to do it somewhat fairly well, and then I was just kind of like, I don't feel like doing this shit anymore. Hmm. All right, and I would take the necessary steps to get the outfit as close to what the anime showed as I could in real life. Yeah, yeah. Sure, at the time that I did it, I had stipulations like no dyeing my hair crazy colors and stuff like that. But it's still just, just people are fucking stupid. Go to a convention. Nice thesis. <laughs> nice thesis. People are fucking stupid. I like it. <laughs> Well, my ultimate, my ultimate problem, like cosplay. I mean, w- the way I come at it is, let the, you know, I I do not like the idea of cosplay. Right? I'm happy for other people to do it. There are some lasses that even look damn good doing it. Okay, but ultimately, it's not for me. I don't want to do it. And you know, all I'm going to say is, I know that cons can get crazy. You know, if there's like someone oh, that's like you. trying to cosplay and anyone wants to storm them. Mm. Let's say if me, I'm, I'm just giving this as a warning now. When me and Lauren go to a con, and if she's cosplaying, which she probably will be, and there are some people there that immediately want to rush up and fucking try to get the photo shoots and all that, the, the word is ask, okay? Because here's what's going to happen for any stupid motherfucker who does what happened to a couple of friends of mine when they went cosplaying, and they try to pull partners away just, you know, because, well, you're not in cosplay, so you don't matter, come with us. I will first start by ripping your eyeballs out. <laughs> I will then rip your balls off, and I will swap them round. Just so you'll be able to see my foot coming towards your penis at a rather alarming rate. And then I will put your balls back where they are, and your eyes back in your socket, so that you can see my fist pummeling your face into fucking oblivion. <laughs> and, another, and another thing that pisses me off about cons, and they say this every year in like the program book, Take a fucking shower. No oh, offense, yes. I don't want to be in the registration line of the opening goddamn day and I smell your funk from 30 people uh, away. There's a song in that song. <laughs> <laughs> smell your Gotta funk. Get that smell your funk. funk. <laughs> you got the funk. Sorry. <laughs> oh my I, I god. Know that during, uh, during the last Otakon. Go get back. Go on, take a dunk. I <laughs> smell your funk. Smell like dunk. Oh yeah. But Sorry. I remember whenever I went to Otakon a couple years ago, because I wasn't able to go last year, I was in registration line and I could smell people's funk. And I remember making Facebook posts about it. And people were feeling legitimately sorry for me. Yeah. Because of the fact that I was stuck in a line with a guy with some serious motherfucking funk because his fat, his stinky fat ass or whatever decided, let's not take a shower today. I want to get the, I want to be the first person in line so that I can go to this panel. <laughs> and take a shower first thing in the morning, you cunt knuckle. Take, take some no, even better. Take some goddamn baby hey, hey, wipes. At least they take... don't smell like sex. Dude, they smelled like they came out of the goddamn dump. That's worse than sex. I, I, I think Steven would disagree with me. I'm not going to go in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's move but, on. <laughs> but what they, could do, what they could do is pack baby wipes. Yes. And pack, yeah. like, Axe well, or some kind well, of the deodorant thing. spray. When... When I went to Malta, um, obviously I was concerned with the fact that I was going to be in a hot country and I wasn't going to have immediate access to a shower 24 fucking 7. So I obviously had spread all that, but I was sure to pack wipes with it. So when I couldn't just get into the shower, I'd be able to at least wipe myself down. And I would do that when I would go to work, obviously, because when I worked for Red 5, it was like I had to stop. So you had psych electricity, so the building was hot mm. all the fucking time. And no. our, uh, our, our finding system didn't work. 
So um, basically, I took wipes to wear with me so I could wipe the back of my neck, wipe my face, you know, and just try to, you know, keep you as cool as possible. And also, you take deodorant. I mean, exactly. If it's you go, not that hard. Just take a fucking, just put it in your backpack. Everybody there at yeah. a convention has a goddamn backpack to carry their merchandise if yeah. they don't want to go back to their yes. hotel room. Don't worry. Don't worry if you don't think Vegeta would carry a backpack. In this universe, we'll accept it. Exactly. And here's the thing. If somebody wants to take your picture and you don't want that backpack in it, and you've got a friend, or you can ask the photographer to actually put it yeah. down by their feet. Exactly. I mean, if someone came up to me and said, look, mate, would you mind taking my photograph? I'd be like, sure, do you want me to hold your bag for you? You know, I'll even put the fucking bag on, you know, if it helps you. It's like that. No one's going to steal it. Why? Because if anyone tries to steal it, I'll rip the balls out, okay? Yeah. You know, so, I mean, here's my rule of cosplay. If I was, if I was going to go to cosplay, uh, and I don't know who I would go cosplay as, because I don't look like anyone. But, uh, well, I look like my reflection, if that helps. Yeah. But, um... I say I was able to pull it up, and someone's like, oh, my God, I'm going to... I'd be like, dude, just chillax. I'm a guy in a costume. All right? Just chill. You know, because I, I, I'll tell you the story about my friends very quickly. Uh, basically, uh, I'll just stick with one of them. They were going to a convention that was happening up in Canada. And the guy was a bit like me, average Joe, nothing great to look at, but had somehow been incredibly lucky enough to get a girl that was fucking awesome looking, right? <laughs> Now, I can't remember who she was cosplaying as. I think it might have been Yuna from Final Fantasy X. It was either Yuna or Yuna Alaska, one of the two. But anyway, the weather cosplay, and when he, he, the, he was in what was his big group, and a bunch of people saw her, like, oh my god, can we get a picture? And they literally just grabbed my arm, started dragging her away, and then when he tried to step forward, one, they were kind of like, oh, get away, like, trying to push him away as if it was nothing. Now, for legal reasons, I won't say what he did, but let's just say he makes what I would, what I threatened to do, look like small pittance. It's just, people at conventions have no common courtesy, like, at some conventions. I'm not going to say all, because there have been a few that I've been to that have been really, (laughs) that have been, there have been a few conventions I've been to that have been really awesome, and they've been really considerate and kind. Like, you know, if you're with a group of friends, they'll literally just be like, you know, can I take your picture? Or, you know, can I take their picture by themselves? The group of friends will go behind the camera person and help them get, you know, get the angle right or whatever. You know, and yeah. wait the 30 seconds or 10 seconds it takes to get a picture. But there have been cons. And most notably, this is Otacon. Yeah. Because it is the convention I've been to the most times. And in recent years, no offense, it's gone downhill just because of the amount of people that go there every year. Um, but there are people at, like, you know, Otakon would just grab somebody and just fucking drag their ass off, and it's just like, seriously? Seriously? You, you didn't want to ask? They're, they're with these people, and, and you're, you're being a dick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I... Yeah. I mean, there was one year, I think it was back in 2005, it was my first Otakon I think I went to, where I was dragged off. I was cosplaying as a Riku from Final Fantasy X, not X2. I'm not going to dress up. I did that dress yeah. once, but never again. Yeah, um, I understand. But I was dragged off. I like from... that dress. Then you wear it. Okay. You remember what happens on DeviantArt when you ask, you dare me to do something. Hey, <laughs> hey. Well, just, just quick, I released some Steve John 3 merchandise available at CapitalPress.com for Steve John 3 and you could actually buy Seizure of Series 3 Thumbs. I didn't think anyone would buy it. And then I found out somebody did. And it was Kai. <laughs> <laughs> and then he posted a picture of him wearing it. And then sent me a link without telling me what the link was. <laughs> and seeing it was on TV and art, I thought it would be fine. <laughs> Kai he didn't even know Kai, who it was Kai. because he just knew some person yes. had posted a picture of that yeah. in a thong. I'd put myself as a different TV and art name. It was hilarious. Yeah. And the thing is, I still didn't know who it was until Kai confessed to it. <laughs> <laughs> but I was essentially dragged away from a friend of mine who was cosplaying as Misty, but he was being he was a dude, so he was essentially me and Misty. Yeah, I could have said that. But here's the thing, I was with him. Yes. Alright. And the fact they didn't even ask him, didn't do shit, kind of pissed both of us off. And it was uh-huh. like, no, I'm sorry, I can't, you know, have my picture taken because you're being a general douche. But it's just, 
it's so irritating how disrespectful at times the anime community can be and how ignorant they can be. I don't yeah. like, like, I'm not trying to be mean, but one of my relatives, or may, might be a relative, might not be anymore, because it's through yeah. marriage, she got into anime because of me. Yeah. And she, and I'm not trying to be mean to her, but she is the typical freaking weebo. And what makes it even worse is that she'll speak in the Japanese way, you know, she'll type mm. up the Japanese words, and she'll spell them incorrectly. Uh-huh. And it's like, how can you attempt to write, speak, talk, speak, or, you know, type speak like that when you can't even spell it correctly? That makes you look doubly ignorant because, A, you don't know the language, B, you don't know how to spell it, and C, you look like an ignorant fucking retard. Mm, yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, and then you have the people that, if you don't like a certain show like Naruto, I know I'm going to get the piss ripped out of me because of this lovely episode, because of the fact that I'm bashing mostly on Naruto, but no offense, Naruto is a horrible show, in my mm-hmm. opinion. But if I were to say that... And I'll, I'll, just say, I'll, just, I'll just say it's a horrible show. With me saying this, this is inviting me to the Uber fans. The retarded fans, the fans that wear the Naruto jacket or the Naruto headband out in motherfucking public. And they don't want to listen to reason. A a lot of the weeboos, the new people in anime, just don't give a shit. Alright? They just don't. And they will bash you just because you don't like, you know, their anime. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I'm allowed to my opinion, and I think that Naruto is a bad fucking show. I think it's... I'll, I'll tell you my gripe with Naruto fans. Um, I don't I, I don't have allegiances in terms of animes, right? Because, as you know, I'm very new to the anime thing. My problem is that Naruto fans are so Christian, Catholic, you know, religious towards Naruto. They they are very not all of them, but the I was I was in an argument where they said, "Oh, Naruto could beat the shit out of Goku or Vegeta." And I was thinking, <laughs> speaking speaking purely yeah. on a logic basis, you're I, full I, of shit. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. He, they can speaking blow up planets. What can you blow up? Oh, I'm sorry, women with tits. Oh, you're really impressive. It's like you can barely screw, you can barely blow for this on your face, all right. So, but you know, my my great with Weebos again. It's a bit like um, you know, I compare Weebos, and this will be lost on you, uh, Lord. But Weebos to me are like uh, Del Boy from Only Fools of Horses, <laughs> who tries to talk French when he doesn't know French. So you, you say like, well, we bien, we bien. Comment ça va? That's what they say in French, you know? Like, you have no idea what it actually means, or you have a basic understanding. Like, for me, I sometimes use French, but it depends on the context I'm using it. You know, sometimes I say, oh, bonjour, but it's just because, you know, I had to say it so much at school when you're doing French, you have to repeat these things over and over and over again. And many times a teacher wouldn't speak to you unless he spoke to a bat in the French language. That's what our language lessons were like. Mm. So, so I, sometimes I do speak in French, but I don't consider myself a fan of the French culture, neither do I consider myself, you know, an expert on the French. I just know a bit of French. Oh. So, I, but then you got, but weebos are the kind of people that would be like, you know. Oh my God, I love Japan. I want to move yeah. there and eat ramen all day. Yeah. Bitches, it's you like, realize I, I, that they don't just, like fucking people outside of their own country? They're, what is it? What's the word, uh? Uh-huh. But they they are they are they have a phobia. They dislike people from the Western world or from from any other country except for their own. They don't well, like Americans. They yeah. they think Americans. <laughs> and this may be incorrect. And if anybody that is both you know Japanese and can speak English can correct me on this, but for the most part, Japanese people do not like Americans. Oh. Well, you know, I, I'll have to be because, again, I, I'm a fan of Dragon Ball Z, even though it's a stupid storyline, but it's awesome at the same time. It's kind of like, you, I just, I don't understand a single word of Japanese. I don't pretend. The closest I get to speaking Japanese is taking the piss of the narration, just because I think the guy sounds awesome. 
every anime I've seen has always got one chap has always got certain styles of Japanese voices, right? The you've got the you got the you know, you know you've got the, uh, the 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 old rich per, rich kind of voice, which is <laughs> you know. You've got the you know Gaeta! that one guy whose nose always bleeds and everything, but never gets to go. You know, you've got, you know, and obviously you've got the female voices, and you've got the one guy who barely talks, he's quite mysterious, he's always like, ah, it's got to go to the I don't know. You know, that kind of, uh, and again, I can't speak Japanese, and I'm not telling the person out of Japanese, but the style of voices are brilliant. But, um, you know, Etta, do you want to give your final thoughts on the subject? <laughs> oh, they're just, weeboos just piss me off. So, the, the dynamic of the weeboo pisses me off. The dynamic of the weeboo. The makeup, is, the makeup of a weeboo pisses me off. Whether it's because <clears throat> their fascination with Japan just based on anime, or you know their religious cult followings of different animes that are completely retarded and have no basis in plot or anything else, and just the simple way that they act in general and the way that well, just cons. That's all I'm gonna. Keep, the weeboos are cons. penis. <laughs> Well, you know, there is ten minutes left of the show, so let's go into our What Have We Learned segment. Oh, 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 I know, I know. What? What have I learned? I have learned the following about society. We all need a bit of... <clears throat> Sorry. And, and that will get beaten out. out. <laughs> oh. It has to, mate, because uh, I'm not allowed to include any... Uh, audio that I don't own in the show. Oh. Well, okay. Otherwise, I get taken <laughs> off. <laughs> but uh, I've, I, you know, I hope that people have learned that if you want to take a photograph of someone at a con, be sure to ask them. You know, because they might be with people who may not appreciate you just dragging people off. And also, even if they're on their own, don't assume that they're just going to do what you want. So, if you want a photo, ask. We've also learned that. Take a shower or take some wipes when you're at a con. In fact, anywhere that's going to be hot, either due to weather or static electricity or just massive groups of people. And the church are a bunch of, uh, full of absolute wankers! Yes, we've learned that no matter how you disguise it, religious bullshit and coupon marriage is still religious bullshit. I love... Hmm, what have I learned? We've... I've learned that society... On many different levels, are full of ignorant cunts. I love that, and we've also learned that this country and me others really need to analyse how they approach education. But you know, we've got time to show, so you know, let's do a clip note kind of idea. Hey, is it, I mean, there's one thing I want to quickly discuss, um, and then we'll throw it around, you know, before we do the outro of the show. One thing I want to quickly discuss is a situation, and you know about, you two know about this because of my Facebook posts. I, well, you might know, Kai. Uh, Lauren definitely does. Uh, TNA Wrestling. Oh, God. Known as TNA Entertainment. Recently put a DTMA takedown notice on the Lordcat community, which is live.lordcat.com and lordcat.com. Um, they alleged, sorry, they claimed that Lordcat was restreaming their Victory Road pay-per-view. This was bullshit. Never happened. And although the 24-hour ban has been lifted on Lord Cat, basically 24 hours passed, they have still not taken down their DCMA strike. And if Lord Cat gets another one, it could be taken down. It was made bullshit. TNA should legally, morally take down that DCMA strike, and they haven't yet. And they haven't even responded to Lord Cat. So, speaking on behalf of myself and my fellow uh, producer and co-host uh, Adam Colby Logok, we absolutely refuse to support TNA in any way, shape, or form, financially, morally, or even by, you know, showing any kind of mention of the show. So this will be the only time it's ever mentioned on the show, and the very concept of TNA is a banned subject on this show. So that that's just... for Mark out as well? Total yep. Mark out. out. We've got our own announcements on that show. If you visit... Uh, cjones73.tumblr.com and if you visit uh, totalmarkout.tumblr.com we've already made the announcements there but we will uh, I will be discussing the subject on that show on episode 7 which will be aired on April 7th 
because he comes after WrestleMania. Woo-hoo! So we've got six minutes. So anything you guys briefly want to mention? Like we've got, we've got a couple of minutes dedicated to your little mini subjects. Anything you or a funny story, a joke, anything or a message or shout out. Kai should come back because that little like blow up was hilarious. Yes, Kai. Kai will be. Kai will be back on a future episode. I've been quite calm since then. I, I there's so yeah. many times I've wanted to blow up, but just the opportunity hasn't that, arisen. So yeah, but no, we'll get you back in a future episode. I will be blowing up your computer speakers soon, guys. So keep your ears awesome. peeled. <laughs> well, you know, I'll do, quickly do the plugging now. Oh, okay, yeah. you Bye, you boy. can. You can follow me at Steve Jones on three. That's on Twitter. You can also, if you're watching this via the TV, then you can check out all my videos at youtube.com forward slash user forward slash the wandering angel. And if you're watching this on YouTube, then you can see all my videos on blip.tv forward slash the wandering angel. I thought that was for YouTube, not for blip. Blip, blip.tv forward slash. Yeah, but you said if you're watching it on YouTube, you can go to, you know, flip.com slash The Wandering Angel. Yeah, flip.tv forward slash The Wandering Angel. Yeah, but if this is on YouTube, why would they want to go to Blip? Because they can see all my other videos there as well. So they they can fight. Couldn't couldn't they just do the same thing during with YouTube? Yes, but here's the thing. (laughs) If they watch my videos on Blip, I get paid for it. (laughs) If they watch your videos on YouTube, they have to click on adverts for me to get paid. So I'm just giving them the choice. And plus on Blip TV, the videos are shorter, so therefore they're easier to load because we take the long episodes and divide them into smaller videos. Mm. So see, there is a benefit for everyone. Oh, and you can really? also follow me at stevejones313.tumblr.com. You can follow me on DeviantArt at stevejones313.deviantart.com. And soon, my friends, there will be a new website. It's coming soon. Yeah, well... How soon? Huh? Soon. Yeah. Well... I, I, I feel the I feel the glare from Stephen. This is how I feel about that one. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> and to, also... You're going to have to Chewbacca that one out, too. Ah! Uh, yeah, ah, I am. not that. You see, you don't have to do that with this one, because it is not an owned noise. But uh, I suppose it's not original. Mm. It's it's owned by Nintendo. Oh my! You'd still have right. to be Actually, boxes. it's uh, it's um, free source material. Uh, that that is it. Yep. Oh, well, there'll be one Chewbacca in out. As is neither is this. Isn't that wonderful? Mm. So we've got three minutes of the show. So it's kind of, so basically anything you guys want plugging. I know I asked at the start of the show, but hey, anybody got any pages you want to plug? No. YouTube. Dot com forward slash users forward slash the quill guy the uh, quill yes. guy for, actually there is one subject I want to address to you Kai mm-hmm. the quill guy mm-hmm. hey that rhymes awesome capiche our old show when we eventually meet up will we have a very special capiche episode <coughs> the future of capiche is ours Season two is on its way. Season good. three is a future that shall be happening when me and Steve reunite and exactly. go. But you know, where can we? Gay romance. Nah, it's not really. Love is in the air. <laughs> Love is in the air. Tell that to guy. So you went, so hang on, you went with Lovers in the Air when you've got Steve Lynch's If I Were Gay. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, yes, you know, well, you know, that's all the plug it again. If you didn't catch that address, that's youtube.com forward slash user forward slash the quill guy. All links will be available in the video description below. And uh, yeah, thank you very much to Lone and mm-hmm. thank you very Bye-bye. much to Kai. And I actually pointed to either side of me as if you guys are sitting next to me. That's because you fail. That, that's because I am a retard. And yes, I'm finishing are. my can of Mountain Dew. It's a good time to sign off. Yes, well, next week, ladies and gentlemen, Lone will be returning on the show. Oh, yeah, I will. Yes, it will be her third episode in a row. But fear not, she is not the only person returning. Dan the Geek King Adamson will be joining us once again 
And a new guest. Yes. A new guest whose name I cannot pronounce. Um, Inyo. I, what? Inyo. What's he called? Inyo. Inyo. Inyo Groot will be joining us. You know, he'll be joining us next week for the hilarity, argument, discussion, debate, and screaming and shouting and killing. So it just leaves me to say thank you to my guests for coming in. Check out the uh, links in the description and. Goodbye. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs>